Welcome back to my tutorial series on Obscurium by Sugarbytes. Obscurium is a really interesting sequencer with a built-in synth. In the first video in this series, I talked about the synth parameters. We can also use Obscurium to control other synthesizers. One of the ways we can do that is to load it within Obscurium itself. If you go to the Sound tab, click on the Plug-in button, you can select a VST synth by clicking here. I've loaded up an FM8, and if we want to see its graphic interface, you can click here. This is the area where you make your assignments to the parameter lanes of Obscurium. We'll have the ability to control 10 different parameters. They correspond with these lanes from here to the bottom. Simply click on a parameter and assign it to a control. As you make these assignments, the lanes adopt the parameter names. You can also randomly assign them by clicking here. This approach only allows you to load one instrument and it's VST only. So I'm going to show you a way to use Obscurium to control any number of targets at the same time, including the logic instruments. We don't have a way in logic to access the output of the MIDI data. So to do this, we're going to go outside logic and load Obscurium in a platform called Plog Bidule. We'll be able to send those MIDI messages out of Plog Bidule and back up into logic. Bidule will generate four MIDI pathways up into logic. So the first thing we have to do is actually close logic and open Bidule. After firing up Bidule, reopen Logic, and Logic will see those four MIDI pathways. These function pretty much like the inter-application communication bus. After you've opened up Bidule, you'll basically be looking at a blank Bidule screen. Now you can go back and open up Logic. In Logic, if you go to your Click and Ports layer of the environment, you'll see that the four Bidule MIDI pathways are showing up on the physical input. We're going to be able to use tracks in Logic to drive the Obscurium in Bidule. To get a logic note message to Bidule, we run a track called External MIDI Object. When you select that type of track, you see that the Bidule pathways show up as possible ways to transmit MIDI. We'll use Bidule Pathway 1 to get the MIDI out of logic and into Bidule. This is the MIDI track that we just created. Because Obscurium can play several instruments at the same time, I've loaded a couple of massives and the contact action strings. The reason why I have two massives loaded is one is already set with a bunch of controller assignments. But if you want to follow along and you have massive, you can load up the fluffy clouds patch. And I've turned down the effects mix and brought down the wavetable position and the cutoff point. In order to have Obscurium play in sync with Logic, we'll need to transmit MIDI clock from Logic. So we go to the project settings and go to the synchronization page. Here we go to the subsection MIDI and we activate the transmission of MIDI clock, and we assign it out Bidule 1. So this way, Bidule will be getting our note messages and our clock messages. Right, so our objective is to get the Bidule 2 messages to these devices here. I've got the click and ports layer showing here, and a separate environment window showing the mixer objects. On the mixer window, I'm going to add a monitor. The monitor will serve as a splitter to enable us to get the Bidule 2 messages to multiple targets. So the oddball thing here is that we can attach a cable from one window to the other window by dragging from the Bidule point across over to the monitor object. And we can attach the multiple points of output from the monitor to our target devices. This little truncated cable represents messages going to another environment window. So now as I play a note on the external instrument track, you'll be able to hear the Bidule sending messages back. There we go. Okay, we're coming down the home stretch here. Now we're going to talk about the Bidule setup. I'm going to leave my Bidule setup here, but I'm going to make another copy of it here, bit by bit. The first thing we'll need is a MIDI input from Logic. We'll find that object in the MIDI Devices folder. Here's the Bidule 1 path that is bringing in notes and clock messages from Logic. Next, we'll load an Obscurium, and you'll find that in your Audio Units Music Devices. We can connect the MIDI source to the MIDI in of the Obscurium. I found that these devices work properly when you have an audio output, even though we're not going to be using the Obscurium's audio output. If I choose the Soundflower option, that actually allows me to bring the audio up into Logic as well, if I'd like. To get the MIDI out of Bidule, we'll need a MIDI out object. And we've decided already that we're going to use Bidule 2 pathway. The only other thing we need is a MIDI clock to sync object. This will allow the MIDI clock that Logic generates to synchronize the Obscurium. It needs to receive the clock from Logic, and then we choose this as our clock source on the top header of the Obscurium. That's found here. I recommend a couple of tweaks on the MIDI clock to sync device. I find it works most smoothly if you activate the round tempo switch and set a relatively high number in this category. This takes longer for it to calculate the MIDI clock speed, but it gets a smoother result in the long run. That's basically the setup. The only thing left to do would be to assign Obscurium's parameter lanes to targets in our devices. 
I've made a nice starting initialization patch in the Garbut Tutorials folder. I recommend that you go to External MIDI Poly Initialization. I recorded a test note just to drive the obscurium. So the final thing to do, and this is the easy part, is to assign some of the parameter lanes in Obscurium to targets in Massive. I'll just use the macro controls here for ease. Right click, MIDI learn, make a move, and the knob is responding. Let's do the same with this one. Right click, choose the next parameter, and so on. So now that we've made some parameter assignments, I've just added some random values into these lanes to show you that they're working. Thanks for watching this tutorial.